Welcome back to Exquisitely Aligned, where we empower you to live your finest life because we all know transformation is not a Google search. It is an inside journey. And today I am excited to share with you Essential Anne. And the reason why I'm excited is because she has done this journey herself. It wasn't, I'm guessing, wasn't probably easy, but she made it to the other side and now empowers women to do the same. Essential Anne inspires women to embrace their bodies and transform their lives. In her acclaimed podcast, Women's Wellness That Works, Essential Anne fearlessly explores essential conversations, sharing her personal journey of overcoming infertility and surviving life-threatening surgeries. Her story of resilience and healing serves as an inspiration to listeners. As the CEO of Essential Anne Media LLC, Essential Anne is a renowned wellness women's sorry wellness expert and advocate with over two decades of experience as an international functional breathing specialist. She offers invaluable insights into healing the mind, body, and spirit. Essential Anne's achievements are notable and diverse. Other than being recognized as a national women's wellness expert, she has achieved international acclaim as a functional breathing specialist. Through Essential Anne Media LLC, she empowers women to live natural lifestyles, promoting optimal health, happiness, and abundance. Her platform provides self-love events, insightful podcast interviews, and engaging social media content. So welcome, 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 Essential Anne. I'm so happy to have you here with us today. On it. And I think I forgot to say, I'm Gina Meyer Vincent, your host. <laughs> I forget that because it's just part of who I am, right? I'm assuming exactly. you, you know my New York exactly. accent. So yes. Anne, I am thrilled that you agreed to uh, join us today. I'm so happy to have you share um, freely and intimately as you often do your wisdom, your knowledge, and your passion for um, really helping others live a healthy, well-rounded life. So thank you for being here. Gina, thank you for having me on your show and your podcast on Exquisitely Aligned. I'm honored to be here. So thank you. You're welcome. So Anne... When I read, I, and I, I know little bits about you, right, teasers about you, but um, overcoming infertility, which is an issue that happens to um, men and women alike, yes. um, and surviving life-threatening surgeries, um, I haven't been in that place, but I've seen my husband survive a life-threatening uh, surgery that went awry, let's just say that, or... Uh, you know, that led to eight and a half months of not being able to use the restroom anymore and solely living on dialysis. And I know how difficult it was for me to watch that, but I'd love if you don't mind giving a voice to how difficult it was to live that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it, it started, as you said, um, during a time in my early 20s when I was undergoing uh, fertility therapy, um, and a specialist, I went in for a simple surgery called a laparoscopy, which basically mm -hmm. is an in and out patient surgery. And during that laparoscopy, um, the specialist um, cauterized my small intestine, which I had no idea. So basically, he's cutting scar tissue. And in the midst of that, um, he cauterized my small intestine, accidentally, negligently, whatever it happened, it burned. And it caused a ripple of uh, different oh. bowel obstructions, uh, eventually a bowel resection, uh, where they had to remove two and a half feet of my small bowel and resect it. And consequently, I had to have numerous, numerous surgeries after that because oh. it wasn't, I wasn't able to heal completely. Um, nevertheless, unfortunately, yeah. I was not able to have children because I was I was declared a high risk pregnancy because mm. of the removal. Uh, eventually, it was about three feet of small bowel. I also had a <laughs> three feet out of how? Uh, well, we have. I mean, how, how much? We have twenty-one okay. feet of our small intestine and okay. seven 
seven feet of our large intestine. Yeah. But the particular area that was removed was from what they call the ileocecal valve from the yeah. anus, from mm -hmm. basically where the small intestine connects to the large intestine all mm -hmm. the way back. So mm -hmm. that was three feet. And that particular area is what helps absorbs vitamin B, vitamin B12, vitamin B, all the vitamin Bs that are essential yeah. for us. Right. Yeah. So it yeah. was very, um, at the time yeah. I, w I was uh, anorexic, I, I was losing so much uh, weight. So sure. I had multiple yeast infections, uh, dysmenorrhea. I was bleeding uh, heavily for 28 days straight. I had mm -hmm. hormone imbalance in my 20s. So basically I'm, I was having hot flashes at the age of wow. six. Yeah. And so hormones, digestion, I was in constant pain and I was basically uh, disabled and dysfunctional for about 12 years. Years. I just want years. everybody to hear that. Not months, not weeks, not days, but years, which, yeah. you know, I've been through a few things myself and, and then being Mark's wife, you know, I just had two joints replaced after four years of being told I had frozen shoulder and, you know, not knowing what the hip was, but, you know, for me as a New Yorker who loves to move fast, it's hard yeah. to be, I want to say stuck in a place, uh, and I look back on it now, even this morning as I left physical therapy and he was like, oh my gosh, you're free to go. You're done, you know, come back and, and for tune-ups. But it's like, I was smiling and sad because it was like four years, I wasn't able to raise my arm, mm -hmm. you know, and, and that's one third of what you're talking about. Yes. So, but it's, it's similar. finding that sweetness, right. Of like, okay, well, the blessing is we're out of it, right. <laughs> but right. like, you, you know, you're, you're like, how do I make up 12 years? Or like me, I'm like, I need to get on my paddleboard. I need to make up. <laughs> and you can imagine I'm in my twenties. So yeah. of course I'm active. I'm young. I want to get yeah. out there. I want to enjoy life. And at 26 to about 36 years old, there's a 24 to 36. I was basically in bed unable to move. Um, I was depressed, had anxiety, sure. depressed, you know, PTSD, all the things I had no idea at the time I was going through because no one talked about it, you know, right. in the early nineties, no one talked about right. our mental health and what it did to our body. So I had yeah. no idea what my thoughts and, and feelings were. I was also in a very toxic relationship. So you can imagine mm -hmm. how that was affecting my gut, my sacral area, my reproductive sure. area and right. not able, not able to, um, to breathe also. So, and, right. and that basically, you know, where I am today, obviously what happened to me is definitely a blessing in disguise. I mean, I've learned right. so much about my body during mm -hmm. this time. I learned that one, you know, yeah. I'm grateful for the fact that I'm alive first yes. and foremost <laughs> every day <laughs> that I, I, I wake up with uh, breathing. I'm able to breathe. I'm able to move my body again. I'm right. able to eat, maybe not all the foods I used to, but I'm right. able to eat and breathe and live. So I'm very grateful for the simple things, as you yes. said, moving right. your joints, moving your, yes. <laughs> your legs, your arms. Right. Without pain. Without you know? pain. He said, give me a high five. And I was like, here, up here. He's like, oh, because I hadn't seen him. I had been traveling. He was traveling. So I was with his colleague and it was like, you know, and I was like, yeah, four years. I haven't been able to give somebody a high, high five, you know, but, yeah. and yeah. you mentioned um, like the PT SS or SD, however we want to call it these days. But the, the, for me, there's always that lack of movement then it goes to the, the mind and the spirit of like how it plays on us. We're not made to be laying in bed or sitting yeah. on a sofa or sitting behind exactly. a desk like I am as I'm speaking exactly. to you right now. But, you know, we're not made to be doing that. And I, I, I love the fact that you brought that up because how it does affect our minds. It, it's um, it is depressing. It, it is. is. 
and, 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 and especially at that age. And if you compound that with pain and no movement, yes. right. there's no there's no flow of energy, right? There's right. no flow of energy from your mind to your body. So exactly. then the thoughts start racing in. I, you know, yes. I don't want to be here. I don't want to live. I don't want to. Why? Why am I alive? So I'm... those those self deprecating victim mode thoughts that I had were, you know, were rampant, but. I really felt that I had to take responsibility of my health because yeah. I gave my power away. And now mm-hmm. I was reclaiming my power by taking mm-hmm. ownership of my health. And so mm-hmm. I started my healing journey through alternative yeah. and holistic therapies. Yes. And that's what made me realize that there are other ways to heal your body. So <laughs> while I was in yo- I actually became a yoga instructor while I was in the hospital one mm-hmm. instance, so you're talking about raising your hands up, right? I'm sitting in the back of the room. I actually mm-hmm. had a bag um, uh, of um, food that was hooked up in, uh, through an mm-hmm. IV that I had to carry with me. And yeah. the only thing I could do was sit down on the floor and raise my hands up. I couldn't stand. Mm-hmm. I couldn't do anything. So I had an IV of food bag. And then I'm just raising my arms because arms. I was able to to do yeah. anything else. And I'm supposed to be a yoga instructor. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to sit here and breathe and just see how much I can move. Well, and interestingly enough, uh, the gentleman who uh, certified me in yoga teacher training uh, told me his first class that he got to teach was to people confined to wheelchairs. Mm-hmm. So it's, yes. you know, and everybody in the room was like, oh, how do you teach to them? No down dog, no plank, no head, you know, because people start going over to headstands. We have to do a headstand. No, yoga does not have to be any of that. We can practice yoga, you know, lying flat. Like if you were in the bed, you know, instead of I'm glad you were able to sit on the floor because that's one of my favorite places to sit. But um but yeah, I'm glad you brought that up. So that's that's fabulous. But you you have you had a list, and I apologize, I interrupted you. You said you learned to to be grateful that you are alive. Yes, I, I be- definitely learned to be grateful to that I'm alive. Um, I I was very I understood that there was a connection to the higher power. You know, mm-hmm. when you're laying in bed and thinking, okay, the, the, the doctor tells you one more surgery and you're not going to make it. And they're calling the priest to give you your, your last rites, right. and family flying in to say their goodbyes. I'm thinking, okay, all I can do is, is pray at the time. Yeah. Of the pray. And so I made, I made a, I made an agreement with my higher power, God, universe, yeah. and said, if, if you save me, I will do whatever it takes to serve, to give back. And I mm-hmm. just said, I don't want to die. And yeah. the nurse comes in, literally the nurse comes in and says, why are you crying? And I said, I'm scared. I just don't want to die. And the only thing she said was just have faith. That's right. all she said. Just have faith. The next morning, fortunately, I did pass gas. I was, I was yeah. better. As they were wheeling me to my room, I said to the head nurse, can you please tell the nurse, thank you, last (laughs) night? And her her name was so-and-so. And And the head nurse looked at me and said, honey, we don't have a nurse by that name. (laughs) So it was an angel. (laughs) I kept on saying, yes, you do. This is what she looks like. And I saw her. (laughs) No. So whoever this earth angel was because I definitely yeah. had an earth angel help me yeah. get through the hardest and the most difficult time yes. of my life and so that was just one of many many instances and it's so beautiful I mean right we're so vulnerable in those moments of you know sometimes I see people who have fear and I'm like you need to walk through the ICU yeah and just peer into the rooms that the door is open or the curtain is open. Right. And just really ask yourself if what you are fearful of in this moment right now is worthy of being fearful. Like, you know what I mean? Because exactly. being fearful in that moment was definitely a reality. Mm-hmm. And 
um, to be young and have been vibrant and healthy. And all of a sudden this turn of events that, uh, how would you say you had no control over exactly. is frightening, you know, and it leaves us vulnerable and to be able to have that, uh, wherewithal and that open heart and to say, Hey, hello, I'm here. I have a favor, <laughs> you know, like, please hear me. I will serve if, you know, if you can help me out because, um, you know, I think sometimes we don't, as women, we don't know how to ask for help. We think we have to do it all because to ask, then we have to teach the person, especially if it's our right. husband. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like, well, I could do it 10 times faster than him. It'll take me 20 minutes to explain how to do it. It really only takes me five. So I better just do it myself. No, I'm teasing. But I learned as a mom, if I spoke up when I needed help with from my husband or the kids and taught them how to do it, maybe my way, hospital corners, where to make, making the bed, yes. right? That's because of my mom and dad. But, um, you know, then we're able to move forward, which you did so beautifully. So do you want to give another one or two examples of how like those connections or those moments played out? The, the connections that played out for me, my life, you know, in the, the 12 to 15 years I was disabled or dysfunctional, it led me to being more compassionate, yeah. more patient for myself. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and yeah. I realized that the, the journey of true love is the path of self-love. Yes. The journey of true love is the path of self-love. I didn't love myself. I didn't know what it meant to love myself until mm -hmm. the, the moment my body and my organs were being removed from me. And I had to really love my body again. After yes. all the scars, all the surgeries, I really had to focus on, yes, I love my body. Yes, I love my stomach. Yes, I love my kidneys and my yeah. my just to really the simple things I love you know every part of my body regardless if I have scars or not this yes. is the body that I have yeah. is something I get to take care of yeah and that's what now I empower women to be their own wellness advocate because of oh, my absolutely. experience being yeah. in a hospital and yes. almost um, having you know three or four times in an ICU understanding right. that we can make very, very wise choices for ourselves, mm -hmm. our yeah. health, our yes. mind, and our body. Yeah. And it's so uh, I have now five questions. So <laughs> let's see if I can go in an order that makes sense where I'm not making you jump around. So first, would, what would you say at that time led you to be not as compassionate? Was there something going on? Uh, were you busy fulfilling a career? What, like, what do you think, you know, made you less compassionate than after this, uh, you know, breakthrough enlightenment? And you know what, that's a great question because honestly, at that time I was in my twenties, my, my only focus was to have a family. Mm. So I think at the time I was pretty much self-absorbed in my world yeah. That it was about me, my family, what I wanted uh, to accomplish. Um, so w whether or not I was compassionate or not, I think I was just more focused on what I, I wanted and what mm -hmm. I wanted to accomplish in my goals. What mm -hmm. I did learn is that being compassionate for others in the same situation that I was in was what I discovered after I'd gone through my own healing and going through all the different uh, personal development training and, and uh, really emotional releases that had gone through. As mm -hmm. I realized the compassion now I have for someone who is ill or sick yes. is so much stronger than I've ever had because I, I feel that I understand that I've lived yeah. it. So yeah. For me, that's that's where I, where I see um, my strength is is I'm a mm -hmm. compassionate nurturer, 
Um, mm -hmm. I'm a gentle, graceful leader and woman. I understand um, women's health and wellness, especially in the three areas of digestion, hormones, and breathing. And mm -hmm. if we focus on those three areas, believe it or yeah. not, we can really live and be optimally healthy. And yes. that's the difference is being from normal to optimal. And that's right. what I want to encourage women is to understand that when you go to a doctor and yeah. your doctor says, oh, you're fine, everything is fine, but you mm -hmm. still feel like crap. You still yeah. feel terrible. Right. Well, guess yeah. what? There are other things that we can do to reach yeah. optimal health. Mm -hmm. And that's what I share with um, women to educate them more on informed wellness. Yeah. And I think that, you know, I'm married to a family doctor. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, it, to give examples of how I see it is we, you use the word advocate in your bio when I read it, and I'm an advocate as well. I was forced to stand very boldly and loudly as the feisty, obnoxious New York Italian that I am, who's, who's strong-willed and German as well. So <laughs> the, the men in white in Charlotte, North Carolina, where Mark had his first surgery, did not like me. And they made it clear by telling my husband, who was their patient, that they would meet with him, with me in the uh. waiting room. Yes. And then when he was out of the door, they would meet with me behind a closed door with Mark outside. Wow. And I said, over my dead body, will I be behind a door with one of these doctors? Because exactly. they're going to twist what I say, because intuitively, as a woman who's extremely open to being intuitive and guided by that intuition, they didn't like what I had to say or what I was seeing, because I was seeing things very clearly yes that they were not addressing and to you know to a doctor's side of you know because I had to play both roles okay I'm the patient's wife married to a doctor this is their colleagues okay but let me turn it around and what I think what most women and men need to understand is when you go to the doctor how long do they really see you Right. 15, 30 minutes. I've had okay. surgeons take an hour with me. But the truth is, whoever is living with that person, like Mayo Clinic, we finally got to Jacksonville Mayo Clinic, and they would talk to Mark, and then they would turn and say, okay, Gina, tell us, what do you notice in him? Is he parking the car closer to the building so that he doesn't have to walk as far? Is he tired quickly? Is he going to bed earlier? Is he complaining more? Is he this... And I loved that. I said yeah. to them, you know, like kudos to you for actually, and they said, listen, we know the truth is the person who is sick, mm -hmm. their body is barely functioning. Yes. And they are on low battery. When mm -hmm. you're on almost high battery, you're exhausted too, right? As a caregiver, but you are seeing things and you're noticing more where they, yeah. like my husband's health was just, slowly declining. And so I think what we have to understand is we have to be our own advocate yes. in, for so many reasons, because we know what we should know our body. Correct. Far better than, than somebody who sees, right. Somebody who sees any us doctor. even once a month, right. right. They're not seeing us socially and know, Oh, and smiling more today. Um, or Gina looks mighty, uh, you know, fallen apart. She's not sitting up straight. She looks extremely tired. What's going on? Um, they also don't know what's happening in our lives. You mentioned a uh, not so healthy uh, relationship at the beginning, right? I'm assuming that relationship has dissolved because yeah. <laughs> I know I see you smiling, right? So I know you smile more. So I'm assuming um, that person is no longer in your um, world. Yes. But um you know, I, I love the fact that you brought that up because, and not being shy about speaking up. If somebody is not listening to what you're saying and you still say, I don't feel well, here's a good oh. example. My parents would come to visit and they would leave. And then Mark would go back to looking the way he did, which was mm -hmm. wiped down exhausted because right. he was right. prior to his kidney and liver transplant. 
And my mother would say, but he looks so good. And I said, thank you. Oh my gosh. Thank you for saying that because looks so good. Right. Okay. So here is exactly the point I wanted to bring. (laughs) When doctors see, when uh, I'll use me as an example. Yeah. I worked at the time for Procter and Gamble, a Fortune 500 company. I was well dressed. I was mm-hmm. groomed, and they saw me and said, "Well, you don't look sick, There's right? You can't be sick, sick. and look at you." Sick. Yeah. And so it was just year after year after year, and I'm thinking, what you see from the outside is definitely not what what I'm feeling in the inside. So right. that. Again, do not judge a book by its cover. Exactly. We are not just our physical, but our internal and so forth. Another thing you had mentioned about going to the doctor. I also Mm -hmm. recently went with my uh, husband to his doctor's appointment and the doctor would, I would ask questions. Mm -hmm. He would answer it to my husband (laughs) and not to me. He okay, never, that's a problem. So I just fired. <laughs> I, exactly. Fired. I just kept on asking and asking yeah. and asking. My husband always said to me when I would go, do not piss off the doctor. <laughs> and I always do because they do not, if if they answer my questions, I'm very, very um I'm excited the fact that they will include me. But the ones Correct. that don't, it's like next, next, right. next. Yes. I agree. So I you know, we, we do get to choose our doctors and that's a great point, you know, and, and, uh, you know, we have insurance. I'm hoping you do too, yes. but um, we do have choices just like when we choose to what food we're going to buy at the grocery store, where we're going to go to the next restaurant, what we're going to order. We do have choices of who our doctor is. And, I think that's a great point to be able to say, if someone is not listening to you, if someone is not listening to your spouse who's or answering to your spouse or addressing their concerns or acknowledging, like I was yes. saying, oh my gosh, Mark may be the same weight, mm-hmm. but he was gaining weight here in the belly. His kidneys and liver were tremendous. When they removed them, there was over... 27 pounds of kidney and liver. They should be ounces. Your kidneys should be the size of your fist. Now he's so six he feet just, tall. Was he distended? His stomach? Yeah. Oh, totally was distended. distended totally. Right? He looked like he was pregnant. And when you knocked on his belly, it sounded like my table. Right. And so, you know, being, and you mentioned hormones. So that's a great thing. Let's talk about that. There's so many things we could talk about, but exactly. <laughs> but you knew that, right? You yes. knew it would be like that. Yes. So I think with hormones too, we might look the same or people may assume, oh, well, when you start the hormonal changes, you're going to feel terrible. You're going to gain weight. It doesn't have to be that way. No. And we have to understand that if you're not finding the right person to assist you, then take your money and take your vote and find someone else. And I love the fact that you brought up holistic therapies because I am a huge uh, proponent of that. Um, even though our insurance doesn't cover it, I am I value it enough that I pay cash for that. I do. I, I know you do too. And so let's talk about that journey for you. Okay. How did that change things for you personally when you started? So here's where I decided I have, first of all, I have nothing against doctors. I think right. there are wonderful doctors right. and hospitals that yes. uh, I would say in an emergency, we definitely need a, a doctor uh, yeah. and Clear. we need it for a purpose. Preventive medicine for me mm-hmm is traditional, holistic, traditional Chinese medicine or alternative medicine. And what do I mean by that? I mean, other things other than medication, but things that will um, give us not only just more energy, but really those three areas, digestion, hormones, and breathing, so that we can work the mental and the physical. Mm -hmm. Alternative can mean yoga. It can mean uh, acupuncture, chiropractic. I do lymphatic drainage, um, Mm -hmm. you know, uh, stem cells for some. You know, there's just so many therapies. But the doctors that I recommend is always a functional doctor who really gets to the core issue of women's 
um, problems or yeah. conditions. Because yeah. if we're putting a Band-Aid on things, we're just right. taking the symptom versus yeah. not getting into the core issue of right. the problem. And that's yeah. where I really want to focus on is just having women understand, you know what, if you the don't feel so good, yeah. the difference is let's do this, let's do that. And I will say it is not always, it is not always cost effective. Correct. It, and, and if you don't have insurance to cover some of those things, it, it can be a little costly, but I will always say how, how much do you value your health? Oh, yes. Exactly. Versus buying the name, next name brand bag or shoes, right. or whatever it is. But right. how much do you value your health and that you can spend X amount of dollars on maybe more supplements, yeah. you know, on, on um, hormone therapy, which I understand huh. bioidentical uh, hormones are not covered by insurance, but right. they are beneficial for us as we age. Yes. Um, the thing with hormones is there is a, there are four types of, um, I would say menopause. You'll have natural menopause. You'll, mm -hmm. you'll have surgery induced menopause, mm -hmm. you'll have mm -hmm. menopause. And I believe there's one more surgical induced menopause and natural menopause and one more post menopause. Okay. So I was surgically induced menopause. I went mm. into menopause yeah. at the age of 40, which is of obviously 10 years ahead. Yeah. And because of that, my hormones did fluctuate quite a bit, but thank goodness for, for women like Suzanne Summers who wrote you know, some of the first books on hormone therapy right. and bioidentical hormones. She was mm -hmm. one of the pioneers of yes. hormone therapy. Yeah. So I, I love hormones. I think hormones are great. Yeah. And what a difference they can make in how you feel. For you men know, and women. Men yes. And women. Right. Thank you for adding that. Um, men and women. Um, for me, recently, I started using the bio, uh, well, a, a different dosage of bioidentical or a different manner, um, cream versus pellet. And yeah. uh, it's like I'm alive again. Before yeah. I felt like there was 10 veils over my face. And I kept trying, like, I'm doing everything I normally used to do that worked, right? I have a yoga background. I've done exactly. acupuncture, uh, 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 herbs, this, that, you know, all these different wonderful modalities, but why don't I feel well? And you were talking about being in pain, right? Along with being limited motion, which I had with my shoulder and my hip. And that plays on your mind. But I also wonder, uh, because I had those things going on, but for a person, you know, maybe one of your clients, I wonder if they felt, I want to use the word depressed, but not clinical depression. So sad or disconnected or unhappy, maybe is the word. I'm yeah. not talking about clinically depressed, right. in bed, can't move, you know, that. Right. But I'm wondering how many women and men with severe drops in their hormones would feel or maybe mimic, look like depression when really it's, it's, it's lacking of hormones. Have you found that? I have. And there have been many, many studies that women mm. are misdiagnosed with depression mm. and anxiety and given anxiety. medication. Yes. Okay. Given medication for antidepressants rather yeah. than checking their hormones first. And yeah. so women are given multiple medications rather than fixing the actual problem, which yeah. is their hormone fluctuation. So yes, yeah. there have been many, many cases. Um, and I know many women who are, uh, you know, 30 and over, 35 and yeah. over, because perimenopause starts from 35 to 45. So yeah. that's 10 years of, of different symptoms. There are, are right. actually 42 different menopausal symptoms, symptoms that start after 35. So mm -hmm. it can be vision. It can be hair. It, obviously, oh. weight, weight gain is number one for most yeah. women. <laughs> and our skin, our skin. Yeah. I think our, yeah. our skin has a lot to do with our hormones. So yeah. I don't, uh, I'm awareness is the key for women is just being aware of those, yeah. those uh, symptoms and not mm -hmm. masking it with, Oh, right. I have depression or anxiety or, you know, um, it could be, you have anxiety, um, right. the combination with the hormones, digestion, and I say breathing 
Because yeah. guess what your breathing hormone is? It is progesterone. Mm-hmm. So when your progesterone decreases, your hormone, be- your breathing becomes a little bit less. Um, they become irregular. Mm-hmm. So when you, when you have your period during the luteal phase, progesterone drops. So our mm-hmm. breathing becomes irregular, especially when mm-hmm. we're in pain. So yeah. guess what? It starts with the breath. And you as a yoga right. instructor, right. you know. It affects so many things. I mean, the breath affects so many things. And progesterone also helps us sleep better. Yes. You know, if you're not breathing fully, you, you might yeah. not be thinking fully or clearly or can stay focused. If you're not sleeping through the night, you're probably yes. feeling a little cloudy headed. So it becomes this, I want to say, a vicious, vicious cycle that then becomes oh, what's wrong with you? Oh, she's just oppressed or she is at that age or she, you know, we, you know, sometimes I feel like us women, we get dismissed like, oh, go along, Gina, go along. And, you know, Mm -hmm. I had, I'll never forget. I went to one doctor. She's a female, a little older than not, maybe 10 years older than I, um, Asian descent, and she did Chinese medicine and family medicine. So I was like, oh, my dream doctor. Like, she can help me both ways. I can get acupuncture and do all my wonderful whatever I needed. And I went into her. I had typed up, I think, three and a half pages of, hey, I was in this accident. And the minute this accident happened, I, I noticed all these things in my body you know, can you help me? She looked at me with a straight face and she, she read it all. And I, you know, I spoke, answered a few of her questions and she looked at me and she said, well, if you know your body so well, why are you here? Really? I am here because (laughs) I am not a doctor. I can't prescribe things for myself. I was looking for a partner and I guess you're not my partner. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I said, I am, I was, I know my body very well because A, I practiced yoga for a long time. Then I started teaching for, you know, a long time. I know my body well. I thought it would help you if I wrote everything down so that you can, if you're a visual person, you can see it, you can listen to me, you know, <laughs> and we can move faster to correct these things. I don't right. know what's wrong, but something work is wrong. together to partner right. with a practitioner or doctor to yeah. work together to, to get you to even optimal. Yeah. So I thought, was I supposed to come in and bow to you? And you, uh, I just answer yes, no to your questions. And we figure right. it out in 45 minutes. Yeah. I thought I was saving you time. Exp- you know, I'm a New Yorker. I like to move fast. Oh, I don't exactly sugarcoat exactly. things. Let's get this fixed. I don't feel good. I was in an accident and I'm still not feeling well. You know, I went to this doctor. They couldn't help me. I thought you were going to help me. And so it was very funny. But when I looked at her and I told her, you know, Hey, I'm looking for a partner. Then she like realized, I think that what she said was so like ridiculous. And, you know, the next few times she really came in, hi, how are you? You know, but I finally had to leave her because I was like, yeah, this is not who I need. This is totally not what I was was signing up for, you know? Exactly. But Doctors who are open and who understand that that they want to partner with the patient, they would love to have a patient like you because yes. we have all the information written down. I recall, <laughs> I remember when I was going through my journey, my health journey with all the numerous doctors I went through, I did pie charts. I did graphs. Yes. I did everything to to monitor my eating habits, what I ate in the morning, lunch, and uh, dinner. What causes were they? What the effects were? I wrote everything down in an Excel spreadsheet. And the doctor was like, I wish all my patients were like that. Exactly. There are some doctors that do not want to do the work with you because it's such a long process, you know? But yes, I, I believe in that. I believe you have to be, you are where your own wellness advocate. Oh, you yes. Know your body, right? Yes. You know your body. And if we can just empower women to do the same for themselves, 
Yeah. You know, create a sheet with all of their yeah. different symptoms and, exactly. and surgeries and, you know, all the information. So here, here, here's everything in one sheet or a two yeah. sheets. Yeah. That's it. I mean, that's, exactly no, I, um, I do the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I think it makes life easier. Like I mentioned earlier, right? They're only able to see you for so much time. They're not moving in. Well, hopefully they're not moving in with you. You're not that ill, but um, yes, I think that, you know, making sure that when you hire your doctor, that they are going to partner with you, you are, they're willing to do, like you said, take you on and partner and read your spreadsheets and be grateful, like, wow, and you're so diligent. And this helps me see very quickly that you're on to something. Clearly, this food is not work, whatever it is, you know, or clearly you need X amount of sleep or food or whatever the person is needing at that moment in time. Yeah, it's... Um, being an advocate for yourself is definitely a huge thing. And I'll, I'll say, if you're married to somebody or have a child or a friend or a, a loved one, sibling, parent, whichever direction, you know, in your life that is not able, that you can see, cannot advocate for themselves, whether it's a language barrier, whether they're intimidated by their doctor or the hospital system or they're just, my husband was so ill, he really yes. didn't have the energy to advocate for right. himself. The wherewithal, the cognitive. Oh, exactly. You know, and, and if you're on medication, you're exactly. functional already. Right. I mean, it affects every part of your body. So yes. you're not thinking clearly to begin. I know I couldn't do it. I mean, yeah, at the time I couldn't. But, you know, now, of course, when I go into a hospital, I said, here's here's exactly everything I have. This is what I and I recently just had my gallbladder removed two years ago. So uh -huh. I went in, went out. It was easy because they I knew ex I gave them all the information. Yeah. And the doctors were amazed. I didn't want any pain meds, no more right. pain, because yeah. I was focusing pain. on my breathing. So, yeah, basically, yeah. yeah. Once you know your body, then yes. you pretty much can heal yourself. Yes. And you, with help, like I, I'll say I needed help. Right. So I just had my shoulder done. It's, it's, I think my four month anniversary, maybe a day over. And, um, I was very fortunate because when I had my hip done, I was given, um, narcotics afterwards and I had a very horrible, uh, reaction. Yeah. I was actually sicker, sicker, mm -hmm and sick longer than I was on the meds. I was on them for three and a half days and I had withdrawal symptoms for seven days. Yes. And yes. it scared the hell out of my husband, who's the family doctor. He finally got to the point on day three. He's like, I got to talk to your doctor. And I was like, I'm telling you what they told me. They said it could take seven days. He's, you know, I had dilated pupil, one eye, not the other. Um, crazy, like, things popping into my head unrelated from when I was like a child to then dating to like, like no, nothing made sense. I had a hard time forming sentences. Yes. It was very scary. So when I had my shoulder replaced at the same Hogue Ortho Institute, my favorite place, which I hope I not too. to go back as a patient, <laughs> but highly recommend them. I've done two surgeries. I think I'm done. Uh, but the new, the surgeon for the shoulder is different specialty. So when I met him, I said, listen, I had a terrible reaction. So my mm -hmm. husband piped in and said, well, do you want to give her a different label? What do you call them? Pain med. And he goes, you know what, if you had that reaction, yeah. If you had one, a reaction like that with the one, you're probably going to have it with anything. Mm -hmm. I could give you the lowest dose, which okay, fine. You gave me that. The other guy gave me that too. And it still had a problem. And I said, well, my goal is no, uh, no narcotics right. when I leave here. Mm -hmm. and I want to know you will support me in that. Mm -hmm. And he said, absolutely. It's up to you. He said, I had a woman in her seventies who did it. I have no, um, 
a concern in my mind that you can't do it, but I would like your husband to pick up the prescription just in case, because okay. if it happens at three in the morning, yep. you know, where are you going to go? Right. 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 But I, I made it through and it was the most horrific pain I'd ever, oh. but thanks to breathing, thanks to yoga, meditation, yes. prayer, which yes. we talked about earlier, yes. but it was the, the most horrific pain I've ever been in. It felt like, I knew my arm was attached, but it felt like it was 500 pounds. Yeah. And as my husband came to help me, I had to get out of the immobilizer once a day. I was to move just a tad in a few directions, not the shoulder. And um, I, I just couldn't even, I didn't shower for, I think, five days. Mm -hmm. I, I used a washcloth because I was like, I can't. Don't even come. He said, oh, I'll do it. You know, he did very gently. And I said, let me explain something to you. I said, you walk in the room, just the air movement of you walking into the room. <laughs> and he's not 500 pounds. He's an average size, six foot tall man. But, and he's not like running in. He's just walking. In. I said, hurts my arm. Yeah. <laughs> just, just you entering the room hurts. Like I'm sitting here doing nothing and it hurts. Like it hell. Hurts. I yeah. said, I'm just holding back the tears to try to keep my composure, you know, okay. but, um, you know, there is a will, there's a way, and I'm not advocating that everybody should do what you and I had uh, chosen. Mm -hmm. It's not for everyone, but just to yeah. put it out there that there are ways. So let's talk about breathing. Cause it's one of my favorite things. Um, yes. I found when I was teaching yoga on the mat full time, um, how many people really weren't breathing, you know, it, like very shallow, very, very shallow, shallow, very short. Um, and that to me causes things for me, causes yes. me to be anxious. Like if I breathe like that, I feel like someone's suffocating me, even though they're not, nobody's near me. I'm quite fine. But um, let's talk about breathing. Tell us some of the things you love and what you've learned. Well, um, I've been practicing uh, meditation and breathing for over two decades, but what really um, triggered even more information was right before the pandemic. I was... Mm -hmm. uh, double certified, I received a diploma in the Buteco breathing practice um, that was uh, developed by a doctor in uh, Ukraine, Dr. Buteco, who okay. noticed that people who were dying in the hospital, their mouths were open. So if you okay. notice, people would breathe very, very fast and quickly yes. with their mouth open. So what, what that does is it releases too much carbon dioxide, right? Yeah. So the focus is to educate, re-educate people how to breathe through their nose versus through their mouth. Mm -hmm. And you notice a lot of people have their mouths open during yes. this pandemic when we were wearing those lovely masks. Yes. I call that them up my lipstick. <laughs> I call it face diapers. Those yeah, face that's diapers. what they look like. Um, that's what they felt like. Yeah, most people were breathing through their mouth because if you notice the, the masks were wet. When yeah. it's wet, you are mouth breathing and most people were. They did a study, believe it or not, in China of all places, where they, they, um, they studied 100 children with the mask. Once they mm. removed their masks, all the kids were breathing through their mouths. For, so they were not used to breathing through their nose, nose. with the mask. Yeah. So that's what triggered me to become a functional breathing specialist. And basically, I support people who have asthma, allergies, mm. anxiety, um, sleep apnea, snoring, COPD, long yeah. COVID. Mm. And it, I, I, the breathing, again, start, it originates from yogic breathing. Yeah. But there are certain exercises that I learned through this training that actually allowed me to take it even further. Another not just, level. Yeah. Yeah. Not just the diaphragm. It's so it's basically the biochemistry, the biomechanics uh, mm -hmm. and the and the physiological combined together. So I, I like to call it uh, science meets spirituality. So yes. that's why I developed um, your essential breath program. But I love breathing. I think for me, first and foremost, my, my gratitude is when I wake up in the morning, I'm able to take a slow 
you know, breath yeah. in and out through the nose. And I'm just grateful that I'm alive. So yes, breath breathing is essential to life. Breathing yes. optimally is essential to living a longer, healthier, abundant, yeah. abundant life. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, so many places we see it, right? We're talking about serious breathing and, and how it can change and improve our health, well-being, our ability to think clearly. But like, if, even if you saw a child presenting for the first time, maybe they're asked to do a speech in, I don't know what grade. I know in fifth and sixth grade, I had the exact same teacher, Mr. Dentel, and he loved getting us up in front of classes, right? This is before yeah. video, before right. people were using their phones to video. But um and, you know, sometimes you see somebody public speaking, whether it be in the elementary school or in business, and it's like, just take a breath, pause. Mm -hmm. The other thing is with communication, oftentimes when I'm working one-on-one -on -one with clients and there's an issue, whether it be at home or in their office, it's like, but are, you, are we talking about two people who are actively listening to each other or are we just... These two people are talking at each other. It could be a teenager and a parent. You know, it could be a toddler and a parent, right? The toddler doesn't get that they have to take a minute. But if we teach them, hey, can you take a nice slow breath for me? I remember doing that with my son. He's now 21 and six foot four. But, you know, it would be like, okay, let's do that two more times. And when, you know, when they did that, I would ask him through his nose, but here I am through my mouth right now. <clears throat> Excuse me. But um, it changed him. Like yeah. he could, then you can, the temper tantrum, whatever they wanted at the time, the box of cookies. And you're like, oh no, you get one. I break it in half. I learned very quickly as a mom, my son wanted one for each hand. That didn't mean he needed two. It just mean I had to break the pretzel in half, you know? <laughs> and once I figured that out, I was like, oh, this is a piece of cake. But, um, you know, it's, it helps us refocus, realign, re like ground. And so everything becomes easier. So even if you're listening right now, I mean, I'd love for you to go to Anne's uh, website and she does have um, something for you at youressentialbreath.com, which you'll find here below. But just to, to understand, ask yourself, how am I breathing throughout the day or take a moment if you feel flustered or frustrated or tired even and take a few nice, long, slow, enjoyable breaths, not so slow that you start to panic, but some a pace that feels good. And then I usually like to slow it down a little at a time yep. until yep. you get that really full, comfortable breath and um, can continue with that, like you were saying, instead of watching somebody's uh, mask go in and out as they're trying to breathe, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. So that's, that's awesome. Well, Anne, I'm going to pull a card from the opening possibilities, deck one. And, and um, these journal prompts, contemplation or conversation starters, I like to say, I'm just going to shuffle them. As you can see, they're not going to hire me in Vegas anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, anyway, old fashioned works well for me. Yes. And uh, I, I did shuffle them a bit before we started, but it's always good to do a fresh shuffle. So, if it's okay right. with you, as I go through, I'm just going to ask you to tell me when to stop and then I'll look at it and read it to you. So, I'll start now. Either a little sticky or is it my finger? Stop. Okay. Oh, how funny. Communication. <laughs> <laughs> well, that it, it's it's very funny. It usually is the right card for the conversation. So um communication. Oh, that's beautiful. Know. Sunflower. Yeah, I was gonna ask. I don't know if you have a connection to sunflowers, but I, I love I the love sun. sunflowers. Yes. It's bright. Um, <laughs> communication. <laughs> Communication opens doorways to connection. And we've talked about connecting to, to mm -hmm. spirit, divine, however you want to call it. So I have three questions here. You can answer one or all three or, or in between. It's up to you and you can go in any order. So I'll just read all three first. How easily do you communicate? 
where are your challenges? And that could have been maybe in the past, because I think you're a great communicator. How can you communicate better to improve a relationship? And maybe you can either use yourself or someone else. I realize that we got a very personal card, so it's up to you. Okay, so, so um, I'll answer the second question. What was this? Uh, yeah. was communicating? Where, uh, the second question is, where are your challenges? Mm, okay, so before I started teaching yoga, mm-hmm. I grew up in a very, very reserved um, mm. Catholic mm-hmm. family mm-hmm. Uh, with an Asian background. So okay. my family, you were only to be seen, not heard. Oh, so communication was yeah. not a priority in our family. It was basically if you were a good girl and you did well in school, um, yeah. you were, as long as you were not a disgrace to our family, then well, you were yeah. fine. So yeah. basically you, you just basically are there. Yeah. And I learned that it stifled my self-expression and who I was and who I am and that I wasn't able to um, really communicate with people in general because in the real world you have to communicate right it was very challenging as I became older as an adult that I wasn't able to receive even compliments from people because I didn't understand that yeah so communication back then was a huge challenge. Yep. And then when I started teaching yoga, that was a huge also to be in front of 30, 40 people thinking, Correct. how am I going to do this? So I overcame that fear. The yeah. next fear, which is probably the most recent is being in front of, um, in front of the world on social media, sharing yeah. every aspect of my life right. now in my fifties, now being very transparent and right. just being authentic is was a challenge for me because I'm thinking, why would I want to put my whole life out there? But really, right. it's, it's sharing my story, sharing yeah. my journey, sharing who I am and where I've come thus far and, and everything I've learned through this. So communicating <laughs> that has, I believe, inspired, um, you know, women and men and others um, and you know, the community, the community that I've created with women's wellness that works. So those, yeah, I've gone through many, many challenges with communication, <laughs> but here we are now having a podcast. Right. <laughs> exactly. And, and Anne has her own show as well. So, you know, it's, um, interesting that you brought that up on so many levels because, and I wrote notes to myself, but, um, because a lot of, the work I do and when I start with clients is three different types of, let's say, women that I've named, right? They're little bits and pieces of, this is a figment, a, a fake person, but I say Nora, the nice girl, you mm-hmm. know? And she did everything you were talking about and that being seen and not heard. Exactly. And I think that um, many women I would say our ages and older have, they have said the exact same things on this show. Mm -hmm. And um, so there is an episode, if you're listening and want to hear more of what that was like for somebody who's now a PR person, please watch (laughs) it. She was not allowed to be, she was to be seen and not heard. And now she allows others to be seen and heard through uh, fire talker PR. So so watch then if you like what we're talking about here and you want to hear more, we'll uh, essentially Ann and I will talk more about it, but not as long as we focused a whole episode on that with Lynette Hoy, um, fire talker Lynette Hoy. So, but it was um, very interesting how that played out in her life. Mm -hmm. In the same sense of like finding our voice, finding who we are, being able to communicate this to friends in in work, in a marriage, right? Mm -hmm. Um, 
maybe as a parent, you know, whatever. She's not a parent uh, to humans. She's a, a dog. Fur parent. Baby. Yeah, her fur babies, <laughs> her fur legged fur babies. But, yeah. you know, um, communication is so key. So it's funny that that's the card that uh, came up for you today. And we're talking about connection and communication. Yes. The other thing I was going to say that I love is that you mentioned compliments because mm -hmm. I just, uh, we did a purpose possibilities in Prosecco and had a beautiful woman here for that, Sabine and I. And um, that was something that came up during that two hour transformative session was it was very difficult for her personally to accept compliments. Mm -hmm. And we're not talking about a 20 year old. We're talking about, you know, somebody older than 50. I'm not going to give you her age or right. her name, right. but it was very fascinating because it was like, okay, where does this stem from? Mm -hmm. And it stemmed from childhood, just yeah. like you're mentioning here. Yeah. And yeah. so being able to recognize when somebody gives a compliment, I, I asked her to do this from now on to either say, I'm sorry, what did you say? So she could hear it again, because she may have the first time went, oh no, compliments coming, you know? <laughs> I, don't, I can't, no, 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 tune it out, tune it out. And I said, so you have that option, or I would count backwards, three, two, one, with a nice full breath through the nose. And I said, and then hear it in your voice, like repeat it again, whatever that is. Like, Anne, you look gorgeous today, you know? Yeah. And then hear it and yeah. feel it and know it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and then say, thank you. How many exactly. people you, you pay a compliment and they're like, oh no, uh, my hair is too long or, um, uh, I don't know. My son's spots are showing. What, you know what I mean? Like yes. what, what, somebody says something lovely and then yes. you take it and twist it. And what right. people don't realize is, sure, you might not be confident enough to say thank you or understand because of a childhood thing that went on. Let's call it a thing. But the way you were raised or whatever was yes. going on in the home but what also it's doing is saying, oh, Anne, you don't know any better. You don't know my hair is a disaster. And you're like, well, I, I do know hair. Look at my hair. It's long and luscious. And, you know, so um, I love that you brought that up. The other thing, there was one more thing uh, that you said, oh, teaching and becoming authentic and mm -hmm. and now, you know, being in front of that many students, mm -hmm. Um helping people reconnect with that part and um, and then sharing it with the world. And yeah. that's what I want to say. Thank you, Anne, for doing that, because you. you giving a voice to those, all the things that you've given a voice with me today and then on your show and in your community. And as we meet each other out and about here in Orange County, yes. I, I feel like you give permission for others to do exactly the same. You give them the safe space. You give them the ability. You show them the way. You hand them a tissue if they need it at the moment because it's the first time they're sharing something that may not have been comfortable. But um, so thank you for doing everything you've done and taking such a frightening experience at such a young, vulnerable age. And for such a, for me, 12 years, a long time, I want to say, I believe that's a long time and turning it around and paying it forward. Uh, I really commend you. I thank you for making the world a better place. Anne. and um, thank you for getting up every day and breathing and breathing life <laughs> into, into wellness for other women and men in this and children in this yes, world. So, absolutely. Thank I you. appreciate that very much. I accept all the compliments and all the kind words I, I receive and I claim it. So thank you very much for having me on your wonderful oh, show. And and um, I'm so excited to be here for your viewers and your audience. Thank you. So can you um, tell us a little bit about the, um, the, 
the freebie that you I hate to call yes. it a freebie, but so, what you have to share with them today. Right. So if you go to youressentialbreath.com, you'll actually receive a free quiz that you can take. And then um, I am offering all of your viewers, your audience, a free breathing assessment, which uh, is a value of about um, $175. So it's an hour where I get to really focus on what dysfunctional breathing patterns you may have, which all of us do. So yes. that we can do, we can uh, just sit down and talk a little bit more about your breath. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. And for those of you listening, I want to uh, remind you again, Purpose, Possibilities, and Prosecco is here for you, a two-hour transformation like no other. It is available in person where we can cheers to you with either Prosecco or a sparkling mocktail or virtual. So if you're interested, please go ahead and go to my website, exquisitelyaligned.com forward slash PPP, the letters for Purpose, Possibilities, and Prosecco. And Anne, thank you again. Have a fabulous day. I thank really you. enjoy you in so many ways. I know we could talk for hours. I know I we really could. Appreciate it. I mean, I'm like, yeah, we could have talked even more about that and so forth. We just scratched the surface and it was so much fun. So thank you again. Have a great day. Until next time, be exquisite.